Hi, good morning. I just want to do a quick um, discussion about um, reactive distillation. Maybe we'll also include some conversation about um, reflux, distillation, Dean Stark um, type processes on the CPA202 um, reaction calorimeter. So, first thing to say is, you know, what are we looking at? So, we've got the CPA202, obviously. Inside the reactor, we have technical ethanol. Here you can see the technical grade ethanol being stirred and um, And what we're actually doing at the moment is we started off with a, I'm going to say jacket temperature, but I'm also going to use the term isoperabolic temperature. And what I mean by that is we're controlling the external temperature. We're not controlling this reactor on the internal temperature or the, um, the isothermal temperature. So we're keeping the plate, initially it was at 65, and now we're raising the plate to about 85, and we're scanning the temperature up. It's really important to note that, because actually this calorimeter can give you true calorimetric data, even when it's scanning temperature. So in real time, we're gonna get real um, enthalpy type data off this calorimeter. So at the moment, in here we have a reactor. I'm just gonna go over there and get a reactor to show you what I actually mean by that. So in here we have the reactor, its base is being held at 65 and we're raising it to 85 which will initiate the distillation. I also have my colleague Holger who's going to correct me on certain things. Uh, I, th I think we uh, sh should make a distinguish between the inner base and what you point out was the outer base housing. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Okay, so, so, so the outer base housing is heated from outside from the surrounding liquid while the inner base is heated uh, by using the Pelcher element, pumping heat from outside to inside. Excellent. Okay, thank okay. you. So, the sort of major elements that we have on, in, on here is, we have a reactor that we're really using as a plate in a um, reactive distillation column. And what we have, I'll put this down, then we have some, so just stay focused on this, I'm just gonna grab something from over here. These are not identical because we have an extra arm here, but what, what, what we have is we have a effectively a condenser here. Um, here we're actually running a splitter, and it's probably very worth noting that we do not want condensation in this or um, in this part of the um, apparatus. So what we're actually doing is this is such a clever device. The clever device is measuring the vapor temperature and setting the temperature here based on the vapor temperature. So this is basically active insulation. Mm. So we have a base that we're scanning up in temperature to initiate distillation. We have a condenser where we'll be doing the condensation. This part here we have a effectively a reflex splitter. And so what's happening, what, what is able to happen is we're able to um, collect Effectively, the condensate, we're able to collect fractions of the condensate through a valve, which can either then just run to collection, or if you wanted to run a kind of Dean Stark um, type setup, or you just um, want to recycle, you can be doing that. So, what effectively happens is we have, um, have uh, we have effectively the vapor coming up, we have it condensing, we're then able to open and close a valve on a duty cycle, you're either then able to just collect that or you can recycle it. And we can we have a input on the pump. The pump can be set to a frequency. I'm gonna use the word dumb. The pump isn't dumb, but I'm gonna say it can be used in a dumb fashion that you can actually just set it to a uh, low frequency. to so basically pass the contents then back into the reactor. And as I say that, I mean, that's effectively a Dean Stark. It's very good for, um, Asiotropic type um, situations. So, in summary, the beautiful thing about the CPA202 is it can do true um, distillation calorimetry, reflux calorimetry, um, and because really of, of the of the careful design of the um, of the condenser, and in fact, you know, there's this active cooling element. There's a lot of temperature 
sensing going on here, so we're, tr we're truly getting the energy associated with condensation. And if you actually then want to split um, and collect, we, we have a valve which will then allow you to divert um, some of the condensate either to collection or to the pump and we can recycle it back into the reactor. Okay, so what's happening in this video is we've set the um, reflux splitter valve to have a duty cycle of about 10%, so it's just on sort of one second in every 10. And you can basically see, obviously, that it's, um, it's now doing um, splitting. So we're not only returning, 90% of the time we're, we're returning the condensate basically to the base, but 10% um, of the time we're collecting as well. Excellent. And you can see that we have a pump set up, so actually we could do a Dean Stark kind of type um, process. We could recycle back into the reactor using the um, prominent pump. We also wanted to say that if the vapour is coming out too hot for you, in our example it's not actually, it's not. But there's also worth knowing that there's um, a smaller condenser that you can put into the kind of circulating water loop or the, um, or the circulating water for the condenser and so you can actually have a, another condenser attached to the side of the instrument so that you can sort of cool the vapour before you collect it as well. Okay, so that's just a nice little accessory.